I'm going to be using some dot diagrams in class. I did a little uh, demo underneath the document camera. Uh, I don't have the ability to film that right now. So let's just pretend I'm going to have some kind of random process. And that random process is going to come up with a number. And I'm going to repeat that random process. And every time it happens, I'm going to record the number. So I do some random process and my number is a half. And then I repeat that random process, like I re-roll the dice or whatever I'm doing, and my number is uh, two and a third. And then I repeat that random process, and I get 1.1, and I repeat that random process, and I get 1.2, and I repeat that random process, and I get 2.9. And every time I do it, I make a little dot. So we have these dots, and what they're meant to represent is records of values that came out of a random process. So for example, you flipped a coin 100 times, and you made a dot on the number that corresponds to the value coming out of each one of those coin flips. So that's what the dot diagrams are. So let's say I'm choosing a number uniformly at random from one of these two intervals. Now uniformly at random means um, it's not weighted to the left or to the right or to the center, that I'm equally likely to be to the right as I am to be to the left. So let's say I choose one and I get this number, then I repeat the task, choose one, get this number, repeat the task, and get this number, repeat the task, get this number, and so on. And if I do this a bunch of times, I'm going to record every time what the number is. And after a while, it's going to look something like this. So each one of these dots was a trial and the outcome of a trial. What I want you to do now, and I want you to try and do this all on your own, is sketch the cumulative distribution function for this random process. So pause the video, get some paper, see if you can start to finish sketch the cumulative distribution function. Let's make our axis. It seems like the interesting points are going to be negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. And let's again start by plotting some points. So let's think about f of 0. That's the probability that my random process gave me something less than or equal to 0. And we said at the outset this is uniform, so it's just as likely to be here as it is here. So this probability is 1 half. Let's get some other easy ones down. f of negative 3, that is the probability that the number I get out of my trial is less than or equal to negative 3. And it's really never down here, right? It's always higher than this. It's never down here, so this probability is 0. On the other hand, f of 3, Again, what's the definition? That means the probability that the number I get is less than or equal to 3. That describes every single number. So that's 1. Now let's get uh, into some more interesting places. Let's think about f of negative 1. Again, what does that mean? That means the probability that the number I get is less than or equal to negative 1. In this context, that's the probability that I'm in this interval. And my odds of being in that interval are the same of odds of being in this interval, so that's actually also a half. So what we see between negative 1 and 1 is the same stair-stepping behavior that we saw with the cumulative distribution function of rolling the dice. That for any number between negative 1 and 1, the odds of being less than that number are the same as the odds of being in this interval from negative 1 to negative 3. If x is less than negative 3, I'm definitely not less than x, so this is 0. And then likewise, everyone is less than 4, everyone is less than 5, everyone is less than 6. So on the right-hand side, it's just 1. Now the sections left to tackle are where these things actually happen. They actually happen between negative 3 and negative 1 and negative 1 and 3. Let's think about splitting this up. If I were to say cut this in half, because we said it's uniform, it's not really tending towards one area or the other. It's not really tending towards the right or tending towards the left. I should be equally likely to be in this interval from negative 2 to negative 1 and equally likely to be in this interval from negative 3 to negative 2. These are equal size intervals. It's not tending high or low, so they should be equal. So if a half of the time I'm from negative 1 to negative 3. That means a quarter of the time I'm here and a quarter of the time I'm here. So what is the probability that my value is less than or equal to negative 2? A quarter. A quarter of the time I'm less than or equal to negative 2. 
from negative 3 to negative 1, we do have a straight line. That if I want to move this to the right, remember cumulative distribution functions are non-decreasing, the further I move this x to the right, the more of the interval I capture, and so the more likely my value is to be inside that interval. The same behavior happens here on the right. So this is my cumulative distribution function for uniformly at random choosing a number from one of the intervals negative 3 to negative 1 and 1 to 3. One thing to note that's going to come up later is that this is a continuous function.